that necklace. Open that trunk and give me those pearls. I mean business. What pearls? Phone headquarters. Police headquarters. You. I couldn't help it. He turned in front of me. Where you hurt, young fellow? I don't know. Hand me the emergency kit.
has disappeared. Thanks for the buggy ride, fellas. Next item on this list of unclaimed property to be auctioned off is this suitcase. A very personal item, ladies and gentlemen. It belongs to none other than the famous Waterman Grogan, Bo Brummel of the underworld. He had more wives than a sailor has sweethearts. And this suitcase contains all his love letters. Now, what am I bid? Two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> two dollars, two dollars, all right, I bid two dollars. Who says two fifty? Ladies and gentlemen, a great bargain. The sizzling love letters of a man who knew women. Come on now, who says two and a half? Two and a half, I bid two, but who says two fifty? Two fifty, come on, do I hear two fifty? Two fifty, come on, who? Two fifty. <laughs> Sold to that beautiful, charming young lady for two dollars and a half. There you are, lady. Lady, he'll be out in ten years. <laughs> now, the next item, ladies and gentlemen, this trunk. It was found in the apartment of a notorious black mirror and pearl thief. Now, folks, what am I bid for it? Five dollars. Five dollars, over here, five fifty? Five fifty. Five fifty is bid, who'll make it six? Six. What? Only six dollars bid for this trunk? I remember, ladies and gentlemen, it may contain nothing of value. And on the other hand, it may be worth a fortune. Come on now, what am I bid? Twenty-five dollars. Fifty dollars. Seventy-five dollars. Seventy-five dollars. Now we're getting somewhere. Come on now, do I hear a hundred? One hundred? Ninety dollars. A hundred dollars. One hundred dollars, all for this trunk. Who'll make it one twenty-five? One hundred and twenty-five. A hundred and twenty-five. One hundred and twenty-five. Is that all in one over for this very interesting trunk? One hundred and fifty dollars. Sold to that gentleman down there for one hundred and fifty dollars. Where do you wish to have the trunk sent, sir? Fourteen twenty North Grove Avenue.
Stay where you are. This is a surprise. You're that the kind of a girl. Why attend auctions? Be quiet. Light that lamp. I know what you're after. You're just building up a big disappointment. Quiet, I said. <laughs> Anything else, Chief? That'll be all for the present, Perky. Valuable man, Perky. I always plan them as a butler in the house where I frame my jars. Won't you have a chair? Sit down. I happen to know we have nothing to fear from the owner for the time being. If you're going to stay in this business, you better hook up with a different mob. Well, what are you talking about? I don't belong to any mob. Don't tell me you don't work for Lavelle's gang. After all, you're much too nice a girl to be mixed up with a small fried gang. Besides, I took a lot of trouble casing this job. So you better tell your friends you missed out and we let it go of that. Second story, man. Hey, what's your game? Same as yours. Hey, the shoes are gone. Somebody must have beaten Lavelle to it. What'd you do with those shoes? Let's stop kidding each other. If the owner pops in, we'll all lose out. Let's get down to cases. Where do you figure the pearls are? Search me. Wait a minute. I spotted the wall safe when I came up. Maybe he's got them there. All right. But no funny business. You can trust me. Gentlemen, help yourself. Listen, fellas. If we can make a deal, I'll open it for you. Well, spill it. What's the deal? Well, if the pearls are inside, what do you say, 50-50? Now, boys, you have to be absolutely quiet. That is, if you want me to open it.
I've got him. Come on. Well, did you get the pair? Sure. We always get what we go after. Do we have a mess? What is this? A joke of some kind? What? This is only glass. Fifty dollars worth of glass. Glass? Hmm. Now I get that guy's game. He's got the real pearls and pawned this phony one off on us. Well, can you beat that by the little crook? Who do you mean? What guy? Did you get the pearls? No, I didn't, Marie. Lavelle's men got them. I would have followed, but they got away from me. Oh, what are we going to do? I can't make any more excuses. I told George I was having the pearls fixed at the jewelers. Oh, I'm afraid he's beginning to suspect me. Just one of those dreadful headaches. I'm afraid it's more than a headache. You're not worrying about anything, are you? No, really, George, it's just a headache. Well, good night, dear. I hope you feel better in the morning. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, Helen, he's the dearest husband in the world. What a fool I was to have ever gone to Morris Lavelle's apartment. He set a trap and you walked into it. Oh, he's just a cheap blackmailer. Oh, I realize that now. Marie. Well, she won't be down, Mother. She has a nervous headache. Thank you, dear. No, it's nothing. Guilty conscience, I call it. Mother. By the way, I went through that safe last evening, and the pearls were gone. I tell you, that girl has something on her mind. And it isn't a prayer book, either. 
What pearls? Why, the pearls you gave her on your last anniversary. You know, she broke the class uh, and sent to the jewelers to be fixed. Seems to me it takes that jeweler a long time to fix just the class. Mother. Um, excuse me. Why do you always keep nagging Marie? Because she's so flighty. She always was and always will be. And I've always said so. A gentleman to see you, Miss Helen. Who is he? He didn't give any name, but he says it's very important. All right, show him in. Find out where you live? Well, a man in my business uh, must know such things. That is, uh, if he wants to be successful. But why did you come here? Oh, just social. I thought you and I might exchange tips on jobs, you know. Now I can put your wives to a lot of swell layouts. No doubt you can do the same for me. But really, you mustn't stay here, please. But why not? There's no time like the present to talk things over. Oh, you don't understand. It's, it's on account of my people. Oh, don't be afraid. I won't give you away. Oh, it isn't that that I'm afraid of, but my brother-in-law, he... Yes, uh, your brother-in-law? He's a police commissioner. Oh, how interesting. Oh, don't you see? He's in the next room. He may come in here any moment and recognize you. Oh, please, don't you realize... You're right. Uh, he might have seen my face in the rogues, Gary. But surely there must be some way that you can protect me. You know, people in our business must help each other. Uh, goodbye, Mother. Hello, Dick. How do you do, Commissioner? I didn't know you knew Helen. Yes, we met last night, uh, at a party. Well, you must come up and have dinner with us some evening. We'll be, uh, very glad to see you. Thanks, Commissioner. And you, young lady, you want to watch this man. He's one of the best detectives on my force. <laughs> well, I must be running along. See you later. Goodbye, Dick. Goodbye, Helen. Goodbye, George. Now, Miss Lloyd, just what connection have you in this Lavelle case? I know his line. Good looking, good dancer. Bows from the hips. Cocktail party at his apartment. Takes pearls in fun, but keeps them in earnest. Threatens blackmail if you demand them back. Is that right? Yes. But it wasn't I. But then who? Oh, no. No, I can't tell you anymore. Oh, you can trust me. I want to help you. Excuse me a moment. I'll call Mrs. Hartley, my sister. Won't you sit down? Thank you. You're just another one of his victims. Married women, same old story. My husband suspects me, though he said nothing. You'll have your pearls for your party, and the loss will never appear on the police records. And I also hope I'll have Lavelle where he never will bother you or any other woman again. Come in. Hello, Dick. Anything new on Lavelle? Yes, Chief. I'm almost on top of him. He and Matt Dunning mob are working together. Last night I slept on the phonies and now they're trailing me to get the real article. But I've arranged matters so that I'm very easy to find. How are you going to contact him again? I've got an accidental meeting. And I'd like to have the real pearls in my pocket when I do. Of course, I have a hunch they're going to lead me to Lavelle's hiding place. Quite a valuable trinket to carry around in your pocket. You gotta have cheese to catch a rat. This cheese is worth big money? Hmm, it's a big rat I'm after. <laughs> <laughs> have it your own way. <laughs> Bring me the Laval pearls. Yes, sir. Well, hello, Leonard. Hello. Hello, Dick. Well, have you spotted Laval yet? Yes, Commissioner. And the uh, pearls? Never mind. Never mind the details. All I want you to do is to get him. 
Yes, sir. We want to talk to you. Come on and get in the car. All right. Looks like somebody uh, slipped you the phonies. And someone is going to slip you something if you don't come across with the real article. Now, where is it? You expect me to carry valuable pearls around? No. But where's your statue? Say, that might be loaded. And what good would it do you if you would bump me off? I'll let him alone. Maybe he's smart and wants to make a deal with us, uh, like he said last night. Sure. But no tricks. I got the stuff, and I'll go 50-50. But you fellas haven't got anyone big enough to handle it. Oh, yeah? Well, how about Lavelle? Lavelle? Say, that's different. He's okay for me. You bring the pearls here, and we'll get together with Lavelle. I'll send a couple of boys along with you to see that nothing happens to you and the pearls. Yeah, me, for instance. And we'll give you a ride in a nice new private car. Very kind. Thank you. What do you think of that guy? Oh, I don't know. But there's nothing like just playing him safe. You're right. How do you handle a guy like that? Like you hold on to a nail. Helen, have you heard from Manny? No, I haven't. But don't worry, dear. I have the utmost confidence in him. Marie, are you going to wear your new dress to the party tomorrow afternoon? Why? Well, it will go so beautifully with your pearls. That is, if you can get them from the jewelers in time. Oh, I'm certain I can get them in time. Hey, what are you doing here? I thought you gave us the slip. Slip nothing. You fellas don't take any chances. And neither do I. Well, then how about the pearls? You produce Laval and I'll talk turkey. Have we got a match, have you? Yeah. Hey, your line is safe cracking, ain't it? Oh, sure. Anything at all. 
Well, we can use a guy like you. Yeah? Not interested. Hey, but listen. Laval is going to be there. Laval? Yeah. We're cracking a joint tonight. He's the only guy that speaks my language. Lead me to him. Just string along with us. He'll be mighty glad to see you. That's mutual. Otto, you watch the alley from this end. If anything happens, tip us off. Tommy, you take down there. Oh, huh. Come on, do your stuff. Hey, what are you trying to pull here? Where's Lavelle? He'll be over. There's the safe. Get busy. Now, you see, in order to open that safe, you have to take care of this and... We don't need any illustrations or any lectures. Just quit your stall and get to work. Come on, now you can do your stuff. You know, it'll take a little while. Where's that from? That's the Baker Warehouse, 317 Massey Street. Send the squad over. Yes, sir. Can you fellas hear anything? No. We can't stay here all night. Will you be quiet? Now I lost the count. I have to begin all over again. Didn't take us so long to open up the other safe. Come on, what are you stalling on? You fellas keep your trap shut, I can do the thing. So be quiet one minute. Well, you gotta get out of here without anything at all. Well, hurry up. I shouldn't wait until Lavelle comes. Never mind the wise cracks. Just keep turning that thing, brother. Yeah, but you told me he's going to be here, but he isn't, is he? Well, never mind, never mind. He'll be here all right. Come on and get busy. All right, have it your way.
I'll get the cops after me, and you guys make a dash for the car. Gladstone, 6073. I say, are you there? 
Oh, yes, Miss Lloyd. Mr. Manning is top hole. I say absolutely top hole. Have you heard from him? Has anything happened? Oh, yes, I've heard from him. He's top hole, nothing to worry about. Thank you, Miss. And no. And pit pit and toodaloo. Who is it? Marty. Marty who? Marty Sherman. When did they spring you? I thought you had another three years on your stretch. I sprung myself. You fella, you better keep me in the cover. Then I see a root clay. Ah, when you go hide in the sticks? Because I'm looking for that flat footer, Dick Manning. That guy sent me up. If y'all meet him... Out to get him, eh? Yes. He's got me the biggest hole in my life. If it's not for him, I'll be set putty. Say, where's the bunch? I'll be here any minute. We got a deal on with a fella. You better wait in the next room and get through, Marty. <laughs> Sit down. Make yourself at home. Oh, Suzanne. Did anything come for me like a package or a small parcel? No, madam. the fellow we're telling you about. The guy that beat us to the pearls. <laughs> you must be a very smart fellow. <laughs> if I was really smart, I'd be in your class. You hang a million a year in hot stuff, don't you? <laughs> well, I don't touch anything but the best. Say, Matt, pull on the shade, you know, somebody might be watching. Now, let's have the pearls. You know, this is a cash transaction, and I want the dough on the line. Otherwise, I don't play. As Dick Manon, that flat work couple sent me up. Yeah, lay off the rust of. Where do we get through with our deal? Then you can get them. Wait here. Laval, come here, man. That guy's a dick. Yeah? Are you sure? Positively. Well, I want the pearls first. We'll handle him afterwards. Okay. I'll handle it your way. Let's have the pearls. All right. Calling car 84. Calling car 84. Go to 116 Gordon Street, second floor. Escape safe robbers. That is all. See, boys, it's very simple.
You go this way, I'll go that way. Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins. Well, how do you do? So glad to see you. Well, glad to see you again. See you again. Uh, where's Marie, Mother? Still in her room? Now do you think I was right about those pearls? Oh, Dudley. Uh, yes, please sir. ask Mrs. Hartley to come down here. I would, sir. You see, I think. Marie, the guests are arriving. Oh, and I should be down there greeting them. Mr. Hartley wishes you to come down. The guests have arrived. Very well. well I suppose I'll have to go down. Yes, Mr. Hartley, how, how do you do? do? I'm so glad you're able to come. Oh, we've had a marvelous time this afternoon. How, how do you do, do, Mr. Hartley? How do you do, Mr. Hartley? I'm sorry to be late, dear. Do forgive me. Mr. Hartley, I I see you have the pearls back. Yes, they were just returned. Uh, just a moment, Mother. I uh, bought a one-way ticket for you to Cairo. And here's a little pamphlet telling you all about the voyage. Thanks. It will be a wonderful trip, alone. Dick Manning did a very good job on getting those back for you, my dear. Then you know? Don't forget that I'm commissioner of police. But as far as we're concerned, the case is closed and forgotten. Oh, thank you, George. Marie was certainly happy you brought her pearls on time. In our department, it's never too late. Now, uh, I'd like to, uh, I mean, I, <coughs> I, uh, uh, it's never too late. Thank you.